Today's stream is about STL Control Hub Tracer. Let me just talk about what this is, right? Let's let's go take a look. Control Hub is this plugin, and I had a video on it in which I've mixed everything just with Control Hub. I had a lot of fun. It has a lot of potential. It works great. There's a lot of signature presets and artist packs and stuff. But there's a new addition to STL Control Hub, which is Tracer. Tracer is the possibility, or it gives you the chance to sample your own hardware chain or a single compressor. It captures it and then it allows you to load that kind of sound, that profile, that snapshot into Control Hub. Then there's also a trace exchange, which is pretty cool, that you can download. And these are the captures that people have done. What I want to do today is try and it would be awesome, actually, if I had the chance to use, for example, my 1073s or my 512s, not only on the Voyager, I usually have the 1073s on the Voyager and the 512Cs on the Prophet 6. Now, I'm going to show you how I do this or how I set it up, just because it's, it's cool. I have a camera straight on the setup. But the first thing I had to do is I had to dedicate a pair of outputs and a pair of inputs to build an insert chain. So I have to go out to the piece of hardware and then I have to come back. Now, suppose I want to capture the 1073s. I have to go, in my case, to the Voyager and I disconnected the return bus. Then I went to external effects and I effectively faked my way through it. I configured an external effects called Tracer Hardware that sends to 13.14, which I'm going to show you is this cable here, the black ones. This cable goes from output 13.14 into the 1073s, right? That can be set to line or microphone. Then what I have done is I've told the Tracer hardware that the return bus is on 910. That one I didn't change because um, the external effects in Nuendo and Cubase are pretty nice. They don't need to be on the same numbers of inputs and outputs. So it doesn't have to be 13, 14, 13, 14. It can be 13, 14, 9, 10. 9, 10. It can be 9, 12, 1, 16, all you want. So what I've done is I've kept 9, 10 because 9, 10 is already patched from the output of the 1073s. So to resume, resume what is going on is 1314 output of my audio card is going to send a signal that goes into the Neve 1073s, then it comes back to 910 and gets recorded. Now, if, if we send this tracer a signal that it knows, it can do a difference kind of behavior and say, okay, well, this has changed from what I was expecting, right? Or from what the source is. And so for that reason, it will model the behavior of it. So we're going to go into Control Hub. We reset, doesn't matter what kind of preset, but this guy's got a nice shirt, so that's fine. And uh, we're going to go to uh, Tracer and it says, welcome. Welcome to the Control Hub Tracer. Thank you very much. This setup will walk you through each step of the tracing process. Select your signal chain type, signal chain or compressor. Now this is a signal chain, so we're going to do signal chain. And here it says setup. Locate the tracer audio file by clicking on the locate button below. Then import this file into your DAW. Run the tracer audio file from your DAW out through your desired signal chain Import the processed tracer audio file by clicking the import button. Click the trace button to begin the tracing process. Now, this should really be called Tracer Tuesdays or Tracer Thursdays. But I'm doing this on a Monday because I am not sure this is going to work. So I want to do run a sort of a test rundown of this. So first things first, locate the tracer audio file by clicking the locate button. So let's make this a little bit smaller, put it down here. Actually, it will be always in the way, so it doesn't quite matter. So we'll locate the button below and use the locate button. I already have these in my folder. So let's place this dude 
on the locators first at origin here. And we're going to go tracer tone. And we're going to go insert to project at left locator. Or cursor. Doesn't matter. Now this file is a 96 kilohertz file. I think. Can we load information on it? Well, we don't know, but it loaded it in. What I want to put my accent on is that I am at a 48 kilohertz, 24 bit session. So it imported this file. I have no idea what the format is, but I did convert it to the native session sample format. So we should be good to go, right? Then we have to run tracer from your DAW out to the actual signal chain. So now we have to verify, am I going out here um, correctly, right? So look at what, look at the tracks I have, which could be what you will have. There's a pink track that's called tracer that has my tracer tone in it. And as you can see, it's kind of super full scale, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. We have a track called Control Hub, which honestly doesn't quite matter. It's just so I can have the plugin Control Hub opened here, just because. And then we have a green track, which is my return track. So we're going to send from Tracer and catch on Printer, which is a group and will not be able to catch. So we need to create an audio track, give it probably no input for now, call it printed, right? Something like that. Go to the inputs and hope that we can select, yes, we can, STL printer here, right? I don't think we need to output this to anything. Honestly, we don't. But what I need to make sure is that the level that I use in here is healthy for this file. And I can guarantee you because I see that around bar 73, this thing is going full scale, it will completely obliterate the signal. Like, trust me, it will be so much that it just doesn't matter. So how do we do it? How do we calibrate this? Because I want to use mic inputs. That's what I do on the synthesizer. I keep my Voyager, you can see it there, right there. I keep my Voyager at sort of like halfway through the volume, maybe even less. But I use a very high, not, not super high, but quite high mic setting, mic pre-setting. This gives me more, I don't know, it gives me a beefier sound. I kind of like what that is. I haven't thought about it as much up until now. Now I'm thinking about it because I'm like, all right, if we send full scale, this thing's going to destroy it, you know? So we should probably get a um, a plugin in here, even span could work. Something that allows me to know the level I am catching things at, right here. We could keep span pretty much super small. Does it work? Yes. And we put it on here on real time, right? So this will give me a rough estimate of the levels, like where that is sitting. And we are just going to use a test generator. So this test generator, courtesy of Steinberg, will generate a minus 18 for test. Let's do this as a minus 18. And I guarantee you, these are also the levels I'm sending at, that this is going to be a lot. So I'm going to keep it at zero zero send, zero return, and I'm going to actually send minus, trust me, minus 36, <laughs> because I don't want to blast neither me or you. Now, I am probably going to disable your stream because it doesn't quite make sense that I send you sine waves of all sorts, but I will reactivate it once I know we're not blasting things because I want to let you hear how it distorts past a certain level, you will clearly hear the sine wave sounding like a square. So first off, let's fire up the test generator and, and hope that the signal is going through everything the right way. 
Now, with the monitoring open, spam is detecting the signal there, and you can see the sine wave here, right? What's my level like? Well, we for minus 36, we have minus 12. So if we do 12, if we do 36 plus 12, we get what? 24, right? I am 24 up. So if I send a full-scale signal, I'm going to be at plus 24. There's going to be quite a lot. So I'm going to turn on your actual... Well, here we can't hear it. Let me put it to mix. Okay, I can hear it now, and you will as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my own main, and I'm going to turn the volume up, and you're going to hear that after a while we're completely destroying the preamp. You heard that, right? Why is this happening? Well, because as I said, I am at plus 24. I'm giving plus 24. It's four times louder the signal that we're sending in. So if our test signal from Control Hub sends in there a signal that is at zero, we're going to have plus 24. It's a lot, a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do 27 down for safety. So I'm sending to the preamps 27 dBs down because when we reach zero, I'm probably going to have minus three, which is probably healthy enough. Then I'm going to go close to zero. And you can see that now, if I go zero on the sine wave, we're reading minus 2.6 and minus 2.9. Now, the beauty of this <laughs> is that my need preamps are not equal. As you can see, I have plus what? Plus 0 0.3 on the right channel. Do I care? I should. Let me try and tweak the actual trim. It could work. Let's see. I still have minus 3.6, minus 4. All right, we're going to leave by. It's okay. So we close span. We disable it, just to be sure. And we disable our test generator. We keep our tracer on. And what we need to do now is just record this, right? We take the printed track and we run it. I think we just record. I'll do it by hand. Record and go. I see signal going into my 1073s down there. And we're printing something that looks like a healthy unity gain not because we know we're down three. That's pretty, pretty good. And um, it's a three minute and change audio file. So we're going to wait. I would like to spend two words on why this video is possible. It happens because of my patrons. I have a Patreon in which I teach songwriting, scoring for video games and writing soundtracks, being creative, exploring hardware synthesizers, analog outboard, virtual instruments, sample libraries, mixing and mastering, we talk about recording. There's a lot of cool people in there. Check my Patreon out. If you would like to support me, it really means a lot to me and it makes these videos and the future ones possible. So thank you very much. Okay, so we have the file. Let's call this Tracer Tone V1 1073. That's it. <laughs> That's what the file is going to be called. This one. So now what we have to do is we have to take Control Hub and we have to tell it that we want to import. So we should see where this file is, right? It should be here, right? Here. And it is. Tracer Tone. Here. 
this file. So this is what we should feed Control Hub. Awesome. Let's go import. Tracer tone. It's analyzing our audio. Tracing levels are good. Imported audio has 4.1 dBs of headroom. We knew that. Thank you very much. What is happening? Okay, trace mono or trace stereo? Trace stereo. Current settings will be lost. Do you wish to continue? Yes. I'm excited. Let's bring these to a beefier. Does it work? Ah, it doesn't because it's thinking. Okay. It did al aligning processed audio, analyzing compression curve, optimizing dynamic response, tracing complete, refine your preset by tweaking the module parameters. Save. So save in folder, create new folder. Preset name IRS 1073 pair AMS 1073s pair. How do we call that? Mic plus 24. Right. Um, that's it. Okay. Category. Individual models. Probably. Color. AMS Neve 1073. Preamps. Compression. None. Master EQ. None. Effects. None. Notes. Plus 24 dB on mic input. Minus 3 dB FS on trace. How do you like that? Boom. Error. Please enter folder name. Ah, okay. <laughs> Man, that was a good scare. That's the folder. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our first trace. How exciting was this? So presets are not tracer presets. We can't do that. Awesome. Okay, we got it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put Control Hub on Guys 2 and we're going to have it work for us. Try and get a color. So I'm going to start from mix 0%. We need a bigger Control Hub. I love this thing. It worked on my first attempt. How does it sound though, right? That's the settings I have for my Moog Voyager. So it would be interesting to play the Moog through two things, but I have this loop and I want to try it, the settings I have on the Neve, the Neve settings I have on Geist. So let's just hear it. Does it sound like my 1073s? I have no idea. It kind of does. I'm, I'm biased now. So I want to keep these at zero here. I want to do a linking of these. I always like to have these set at around 10. I don't know why. I like this to be always on. This is kind of a safety limiter that I love on Control Hub. Let me try and see if I can so it says, it suggested me to go to refine these, right? So I can go save and it will be saved over, right? Right. Let's do something weird and then, okay, perfect. So how do we work this? The color, right, should be the one.
Okay, I want to I want to try I want to try and keep playing with this thing. I want. I want to say one thing. That boop. That that's a specific sound effect. <laughs> with my mouth, that's as close as possible. This. The way the kick bends. This is kind of realistic. I gotta say, it doesn't. <laughs> it sounds pretty weird the way it should be. Let me try with the tape things. Well, it's kind of a cool thing. I'm kind of surprised that it worked. I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. I heard demos on YouTube, and uh, I don't know if there's people connected now that went on YouTube. And I kind of didn't quite... I, it felt flangy. And I said, we said on Discord, this feels flangy somehow, like an old MP3. This doesn't. This is pretty straight. This feels good. This is just a preamp, though. So we should do more complicated chains. Well, we know what we have to do now. We have to do the 512s. For sure. But let, let's try an EQ or just play, I don't know, with something. Maybe, I'm thinking, what should I do? Or maybe play some synthesizers through it, right? So I have a diva patch here. Can you Can you hear this? Yeah, you can. Okay. So this this could be a moogish kind of thing. Let me move control up over here. Okay. Okay, we have a we have a change in volume here. How do we address this? I'm probably going to do well, I could push the threshold down. That'd be not not fair, right? So let's do this, what I did here before. Let's do a three, at least. I'm thinking I could normalize. Um, so, oh, right, it's true. Uh, James said, can you compare with the real preamps? Of course I can. So let me just hear this, and I'll bypass it quickly. Just two notes. Because uh, I'm kind of used to how synth sounds through the 1073s. I gotta be honest, you hear how it doesn't? It's maybe it's the limiter though. Let me try and turn it off. No, no, it's not the limiter, it's just the. You hear that context? That that silk on top? It is less detaily, but it just synthesizers just sit in. The crazy thing you can do is that you can't give it like one dB of treble and <laughs> this is good. This is really good. This put a smile on my face. That treble because you hear right. The 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 lows are there, but the highs are are sand. They're beautiful, but they're kind of sandy somehow. So whoa whoa whoa. Well, you know what? Let's trace preset this. So tracer goes at minus 27, which was our capture. Lucky as it remembers. And when I press play, I could go either control hub or tracer hardware. James says, sounds nice. I think it does. I think it does. Um, it's maybe, I want to be super anal on it. It's not, it's probably not as three dimensional, but I gotta be honest with you. This is, I'm using Diva. I'm not using the Voyager. 
So, I, you know, I'm so used. I mean, that thing has been... I'm surprised it's not oxide. Oxide. Because it's just the, the, <laughs> the patches are just there. It's been there since I've probably even moved. It was already there. So typical 9, 10, like same channels and stuff. I should clean the contacts anyway. Anyway, so if I press play, we go from nothing to control hub or tracer. So let me do just a test with tracer. I hope it doesn't explode. You hear that thing that it does? We should do plus four. So now we have that plus four we built in. And if I can record something that is right there, I just play it better. It just fits my role to have. When I'm composing and I feel a sound has to be in a specific point, if it goes there straight off from the bat, that's always better. Preamplifiers do it, especially because the 1073s, but we're going to hear the 512s. Those things are compressors. They're not just preamps. The 550s, even more, you put acoustic guitars through it, just... You know, if you're not careful, you're going to crunch it. So this is good. Okay, this is good. This is better than I expected. Granted, this is not... Let's do the same thing on Diva. Let's move this guy here. Let's move this guy here. And I'll do the same, right? Like this. I'm going to keep a latch. Should work if I latch it. Right? If I go to Diva, it will work. Now there's um, there's also something interesting that I have to mention that when we're hearing it, sometimes it might happen that I go to Tracer and the Diva patch is actually resonating more because of how it was programmed. The LFO might just be kicking in. It's such a good synthesizer that it might be in that moment just slightly off. And so I might be on Tracer, for example, and we say, oh, it's a little bit resonant than what we heard on Control Hub. Uh, which tamed things more. It might be just the moment in which I'm tweaking the thing. That's why I was using Geist. It's a little bit more, it's like it's samples. The problem is it doesn't have many, you know, a lot of mids, right? So, but it, it's faithful. This thing works. Okay, we got to do the 512s. So we got to disconnect the Prophet 6 and tell this dude here to be 11 and 12. Now, this is done, we go to the actual, dropping the mic here, to the actual patch, and we move everything to use the 512s. So, 1314 is going to the 1073 is in, we disconnect it, and now we go to the 512s in, right on, here in, boom. The 512C is this magenta thing going to 11 and 12. So we should be all set. So on Tracer, we take our span. Well, this one can go. We take our span. We reinstantiate our span. We take our test generator. I put it out of monitoring, right? And we put our Tracer hardware back in here on the purple. So now I'm going to stay on minus 27 and I'm going to do just run what this was uh, 1 kilohertz at minus 36. Okay. And our minus 36 is coming out at actually they're off. So I'm going to move one of the of the 512s up. This is approaching kind of a little bit, maybe too much, but let's do minus 42. 
Okay, and we're in the ballpark of what we were having before, right? Pushing things a little bit. And we got 4 dBs of headroom. It's okay, for a preamp, I think I'm fine. Or at least we're in the ballpark of what we had before. So, go here. We take the test generator out. And we print it again. Cord and go. So we make sure that our tracks are sold on here. So we only have this, go. We're going to see it in action again. Tracer, complete signal chain, import. We need this guy, open, analyzing audio. Tracing levels are good, imported out as 4.5. I mean, this is how good am I or what, right? Oh, we have to do trace stereo. All right, save, boom. We got it. Preset name, ARS, API, 512. Color, API, 512C preamp. Compression, none. Master EQ, none. Effects, none. API, 512 pair. We copy our tracer, our control hub, to Geist, and we hear it. So this is the 512, and uh, off, and then Geist. Let me do, what was it, four bar, eight bars. Okay, we reactivate the streams and the main. They sound similar, that's true, but they don't sound the same. Let me try and play with this. There's a whole definition in the highs that the, five, that the 1073 does not have. It, I don't know, it's faster in your face. See how gentle that it's it's nice though, huh? Kind of liking it. Kind of liking this. Uh, let's try it on a synth, as we said, as we did before. And let's do a tracer again. Because we had this, which we need to do sort of like a 360-ish. We can do like one single note. Then mute, like solo this, try. Try one note in Diva. Uh, so, the preamp's still better, in my opinion, by a very small amount, which I think the people at STL Tones would be like, nah, duh, I don't think, I don't think nobody, <laughs> I don't think anybody is gonna, you know, I mean, <laughs> we, why, right, would it be that? But I gotta be honest with you, this has a completely different approach. You hear the resonances, when it's resonating, this thing's resonating, but it's it's encapsulating the sound into that feature. It has this no this mid range, this presence thing. I love this preamp's probably one of my favorite. Okay, well this can be done. So we're gonna do more. I promise you we're gonna do more tracer days. So this was tracer this was tracer Monday, but we're probably gonna do tracer Thursday, and we're gonna do compressors probably next time. We're gonna take my SSL compressor and just dial in some settings and try and get it to work. Then we're going to try the pool text. You know what I want to do? I want to do the Focusrite Red 3 with a setting that doesn't compress, but only adds the iron from the transformers.
This is a trick that Howie Weinberg made super famous. He talks about that in a couple of videos. And it's to me, it's always a hassle to just fire up the Red 3 for maybe trying it out on a track. And, you know, I would like it to be stereotypized, is that a word? And uh, we're going to do that as well. So, my God, I'm excited. This worked way better than I thought it would be. So I just simply have to thank you for being here and say that we're going to you know, keep each other up in Discord, for sure, if you haven't checked my Patreon, do it. And we, I'm actually gonna post these traces probably on the Discord first. So if you're a Patreon there and you have Control Hub and you're high enough, you know, in the ranks, you might get these traces, who knows? Thank you very much. The last word is always exact. That was right, you said that, ciao.